just an absolute disaster in many, many ways. Basically anything to procrastinate doing these stupid edits. You know what? You guys know what's in that story better than I do. When did that happen? Was that like a bubble reality? Hello everyone. So I'm here with part three of part, I just held up two fingers. Part three of my NaNoWriMo vlog. It's Wednesday the 24th. I have a little update to do. I just got back from the grocery store. So I'm gonna try and multitask and do this little update while I unload my groceries. What's what's happening? What's the tea here? Well, the tea is that I'm done putting these groceries away. And I haven't even started explaining things. So I'll just take you over here. I'll catch you all up in case you're jumping into these nano vlogs without doing your homework and watching the previous two. I'm doing what I call Nano Trimo, which is National Novel Trying to Write Month. Basically, it's National Novel Writing Month for people who are too tired <laughs> to do anything but just try their best. So I'm just trying my best. Um, my best is not gonna be 50,000 words. The other reason why I didn't do a traditional NaNoWriMo this month is because I'm not really drafting a book right now. I'm very much in between projects. Going into the month, my goal was just to write every single day, get back into a regular writing habit, which I haven't been doing for, well, months really. I haven't had a regular writing habit since July. You know, starting around September of last year, September of 2020, up until July of 2021, I wrote more consistently than I have ever in my life. And then that all just came to a halt. Around July, when I finished the novel that I was drafting, Holy a Ghost, and I haven't really been able to get back into a regular writing practice since. So my goal for NaNoWriMo was just to write every day. I feel like I have gotten back into a regular writing practice. So at the start of the month, I had a couple little things that I was finishing up. I was finishing up the first draft of a short story, some revisions on a short story. And after I finished those things, I kind of realized that it would be a great opportunity for me to try and tackle one of my yearly goals that I had given up on. One of my yearly goals was to revise my short story collection, Pareidolia. And around October, I'd kind of given up on that. I was like, well, that's not gonna happen. It's October, I haven't started. Halfway through NaNoWriMo, I was like, this is my mission. With about a week left, I've revised nine of the 12 stories. The three stories left are the tricky ones. I have three stories left, Melting Point and Symbiosis, which are two of the, well, the two oldest stories in the book. I wrote the first draft of Melting Point in the fall of 2016, and I wrote the first draft of Symbiosis in February of 2017. And then the third story that I have to revise is called Darling, I Fear For You, which was actually the last story that I wrote for the book. I wrote that story in January of 2020, and I've just never really revised it because it's quite challenging. I haven't really talked about it because I haven't gotten to that point yet, but it's a heist story about a nurse stealing a donor heart in a hospital. And I neither am a heist expert, nor do I work in a hospital. Getting the logistics to work is really challenging. My mom, who is a nurse, even talked to a friend of hers who used to work in surgery, I think, and asked her like, what would be realistic? And she was like, it would, it's not like, heart theft isn't realistic. I don't really know about that one. I was really on a roll with the rest of the book. I did so much work. The past few days I've really only worked like very briefly on the stories. I'm currently working on Melting Point. I think I have similar problems with Melting Point and Symbiosis, which is that they're just very old stories and I don't really know how to bring them up to the level of my newer work. I think with Melting Point, I've gotten a little stuck with that story because I've been overthinking it and I've been trying to find a way for it to be a completely new, find a completely new angle to it that would make it brilliant and amazing. And that's probably not gonna happen. I think I have to just have faith in the original concept because it is a pretty good concept. It's about two twins burning down a cabin together, which is pretty fun. I think I need to just have faith in the original concept strengthen the structure and clarify the things that are unclear. Just leave it at that. I think I'm overthinking it a little too much. I need to just fix these things that don't make sense or are poorly structured. Have faith in the concept, even if it's old. You know, it's hard for me to have faith in old stories because they're old and so I assume they must be bad. I just have to have faith in it. And I think I have to do a similar thing with symbiosis. My main issue with Melting Point is that I think the character's motivation for getting herself into this situation is unclear. My main issue with symbiosis is that um, the story doesn't really have a middle. It has a beginning and an end, but there's really no middle act. And the main thing about that story that I don't know what to do is the ending. I really dislike the ending. The end of that story is like not the result of anything that happens in the story. The way that I had it, it was just 
way too sentimental. It is about 3 p.m. right now. I'm going to try and do maybe a couple hours of writing. I think the past few days I left it a little too late in the day and then I ended up not really doing anything. And to try to actually like sit down and get some work done and not leave it till 9 p.m. and then write a sentence and then give up which is what I've done the past few days. I really think if I can commit to this story, set my mind to fixing these few issues, think I can get the story there. I will catch up with you later and we can all hope that maybe, hopefully, I've made some progress. I've started doing a little writing. It's 4.18 in the evening. I finished the other stuff I have to do today. I'm working on Mousing Point. I don't know how likely this is, but I would like to be done tomorrow. I would like to try and get all of the major revision done today and then do one more pass of the story tomorrow. But I think if I keep just chipping at it in like tiny little increments, I'm never gonna get it done. I think if I just stick to the plan that I drew out, where I clarify the things I need to clarify and adjust the things I need to adjust, I think we should be good with this one. One thing I do very much enjoy about this story though is the playlist is a real bop. It's mostly nothing but thieves. I hope you are not getting too tired of me just rotating through like the same four spots in my house and like the same four shirts. You know, I only own so many shirts. I only have so many places in my apartment. <laughs> I think I'm done with Melting Point for now. Yesterday, I actually did like dedicate a solid amount of time to working on Melting Point. I really don't know how I feel about that story, you know? On one hand, I think I improved it. When I'm done editing all the stories, I am gonna do one final draft of the whole book. So I think with a little bit of distance from the story and reading it next to the other stories, I'll get a better sense for if it needs more work or if it's pretty much done. Cause for now I can't really tell. So I'm moving on to Symbiosis. This one I still have questions about. So I mentioned earlier that one of the issues with that story is that it doesn't really have a middle act. So this story is about the main character, his name is Jensen. His childhood best friend went missing when he was like 12. He sees her one day very briefly and he can't tell if she's a hallucination or not. I think that what the story is missing is a middle act basically. I do think this needs to be a bit of a longer story. It wants to have a bit of a more like kind of languid the story before I started revising it was over 6,000 words and then I rewrote it, kept the same structure but just like edited the prose thoroughly and, and I cut 3,000 words from the story and it really didn't remove like a single nuance. There isn't really a middle, there's like kind of one scene where he goes and looks for his friend Ophelia at her old home and then there's the closing scenes where everything, all the tensions kind of boil over with blue and then there's like a final scene that is pointless and dumb. So what I'm gonna try and do is add basically a middle act. A middle act where he's actually like pursuing his goal which is trying to find Ophelia and I think I'm gonna send him on like a little journey around town. My main question is just like how do I get everything to tie together in the end? Because there's a few different threads. There's Jensen and his relationship with Blue, his girlfriend. Jensen and his relationship with Ophelia, his friend who went missing, and him looking for her now in the present. Jensen also collects bird bone. I don't know if those things ever at the end tie together in like a meaningful way. So that's my main question for the story is how do I make it end in a way that utilizes all of the pieces of the story and isn't dumb like the ending I currently have. One thing I noticed, especially with the dialogue, the dialogue in the old draft was really quite bad. And part of what was bad about it is that like the whole story is in this kind of weird fever dreamy landscape. The dialogue is all like weirdly normal. They're just chatting like they're like regular old pals. Hello everybody. Oh my. Oh, he's zooming. We're currently fostering a kitten, so if you hear the meows that sound like they are coming from the most perfect little beautiful creature, it's because we have the most perfect little adorable little perfect creature. He's so perfect. He's so baby. So I'm actually leaving you to see my family in about an hour. Yesterday was actually also one of the most productive. Shockingly, how rare is it that you got a kitten and it's also a really productive day of writing? Well, it was. Spent much of the afternoon. Okay, get out of the wires, silly. I feel like I finally got 
a handle on symbiosis actually. I wrote several new scenes. I ended up actually splitting it into chapters or sections that have like chapter titles. I feel like I'm basically doing with this short story now what I had planned to do with the novel. The backstory with this story is that I wrote it when I was very new to short stories. It was February of 2017. And when I wrote it, it was like my favorite thing I'd ever written. I was like, obsessed with it because it was the first thing I'd written in a very long time that made me feel confident. That story really shaped my style for a while. I feel like the kind of tone and mood of this story where it kind of feels like a bit hazy and dreamy, that was very prevalent and I thought pretty much everything I wrote was gonna be like that, which is not the case. <laughs> And so I was so proud of it that I thought that I would turn it into a novel because I couldn't get the story out of my brain. But with time, as I started to write a lot more and become a much better writer and become a more experienced short fiction writer. <gasps> I love cats because they're so dumb, but they're so cute. Like, I just feel like cats are God's perfect creatures because like literally so cute. Also like the most biomechanically efficient creature on earth. Oh, also, they're gonna be unhinged and idiots. Like, is that just not perfect? Oh, he's purring now, can you hear that? Hi there, little guy. What if I just bring you with me? They're just the tiniest, cutest little guy I've ever seen in my life. It's very hard for me to film this clip. As I wrote more stories, kind of lost my affinity for the idea of turning it into a novel because I was like, I barely even know what the point of this short story is, let alone what the point of a whole novel would be. Since I cut so much stuff from the story and now I've been able to add so much, I feel like I'm basically doing everything that I would have wanted to do in the novel in the short story. I added some stuff that was originally planned to be in the novel. Most of the stuff that I originally planned to be in the novel is kind of dumb, so I'm like, that's not even needed. I feel like I can maybe finish this story today or tomorrow. The main thing left I have to do is rewrite the ending. Yes, that's what I have to do. Sorry, this is getting really out of hand. Hey, is that sound good? Okay, I'm gonna end this now because I, it's devolved to me talking in baby voice to a kitten and you don't need to see that, okay? So as I was saying um, a little bit earlier, I'm going to go visit my family for a couple days. It's Sunday, I think I'm gonna be there until Thursday. If I really commit to it, I think I can finish Symbiosis today. I need to rewrite the ending and if I can get that, then all I need to do is really just like review the story and adjust things. And then that would just leave Darling I Fear for you. I have a bit of a commute, but hopefully I'll have enough time to get the final bit of work that I need to get done on that story done. Hello there. So I'm doing today's update outside. I'm at a cabin. You've probably seen this place in a couple of my vlogs. It's my stepdad's family's cabin. There's two days left of NaNoWriMo, including today. I think we need to just accept that I'm not gonna finish editing this book by the end of the month. That was a beautiful thought while it existed, but it's not gonna happen. So yesterday I spent most of the day coming over here and I didn't really have any free time until around 8 p.m. And by then I was just so tired that I really didn't get that much done. I feel like I'm making good strides with that story, but I feel like there's still ideas that I'm integrating that need a lot of work to be fully integrated into the story. I'm not gonna be done editing that story today, realistically. I'm happy with how that story is coming along, but there's just absolutely no way that I'll be done editing it by tomorrow and also edit Darling I Fear For You. That's the last story that I have to edit after this one and I haven't even started it yet. It's a really short piece. It's only like, tw I think it's like 2,400 words. I've never really developmentally edited it. I don't know, I think that one's gonna need maybe three days. At this point, I feel confident that I'll be able to finish editing the book by the end of the week but certainly not by the end of NaNoWriMo. Editing my whole collection was not a goal that I took on until about halfway through NaNo. It was like halfway through the month that I was like, what if I edited my whole book? I think that if I had gone into the month with this being my plan and I planned for it from the start, I would have been able to do it in a month, no problem. But this is just something that I kind of picked up halfway through the month. I am really, 
pleased with how much progress I've made. I mean, I almost edited an entire collection in like two weeks, which is wild. If I had like just a world of free time today and tomorrow, then I would just spend as much time today as possible getting symbiosis done and then dedicate all of tomorrow to Darling I Fear For You. But that's just not feasible with the fact that like I'm with my family right now. And so I'm gonna have more limited free time. And also today's a work day. So like, I'm probably just gonna have like a couple hours throughout the day, maybe in the evening to write. I just got back from going on a walk with my family. We saw like a bunch of sea lions and also some whales. I'm super tired just because I didn't sleep very well last night. I'm gonna do a little bit of reading. I'm reading Pilgrim Bell by Kaba Akbar. I'm getting there with symbiosis. I am making progress. There's just a certain connection that I made in the story to try and tie together some of the different concepts that I don't think is too convincing. That's currently my issue with the ending is that there's not enough internal reflection to really convince us as to why this is the end of the story. Like, but I don't think it's really convincing as to why this is like monumental for the character. Why this is like the emotional conclusion to the arc that we've just gone through. It's going to be for sure a pretty long piece. Right now it's about 6,600 words. So I've added so much stuff, but I still feel like now I've paired it back to the point that it's almost a little too bare bones because I cut all the poorly written stuff but I have to flush it out with some emotion and some narrative. Normally I really, and you've probably heard me talk about this in vlogs, how I don't want my stories to get too long, I want to keep them from getting too long, and the reason is because the longer a story is the harder it is to submit. But I'm not submitting this story. The old draft was published uh, in a print journal many years ago, it was actually my first ever published story, um, and the rewritten version I'm not going to submit it anywhere, like it's just going to be for the collection, so it doesn't matter if it's ridiculously long. And I think once I'm done editing the story, I will have closure on these characters. I really decided through writing it that I'm not going to write the novel. That had been a plan for a while and then it was kind of an iffy, something I was iffy on, I was like, I don't know if I need to do this. I think what I needed to do all along was rewrite the short story and I will have now done everything that I wanted to accomplish in the novel, in the short story almost structurally it's how I envisioned the novel would go. So I really think I'll be like at peace with this story and I won't feel the need to write the novel. Um, I don't think there would be a point to me writing the novel. Hello, so it's the last day of Mano today. From the looks of it, I'm not gonna have too much time to write until probably the afternoon or evening. I have plans with my family. We're going to go out for a walk or a hike, I'm not really sure. Um, and then I'll probably spend quite a lot of the evening trying to write. I don't think I'm gonna get to Darling I Fear For You, but I would really like to finish Symbiosis. So it's the evening of the 30th. It's just past 8 p.m. I did a couple hours of writing a bit earlier before dinner. I made good progress on symbiosis. I didn't completely finish it. I struggle to perceive this story a little bit. Like I've been working on this story in various ways for so long that it's a little hard for me to know if it's done or not, you know? Comparing where the story was at before I started editing it and where it is now, like it's night and day, it's really, really improved. The main thing that's bothering me with that story right now is the ending. The last scene feels very anticlimactic. It's a little too objective, too distant. Um, it doesn't feel as impactful as it should be. I really don't like the last paragraph. So I think that's where I have unanswered questions and that's where I have issues with the story. However, I do feel like I'm a bit done with it for now. I've been really focused on the story for a while. I think what I wanna do now is put it aside revise Darling I Fear For You and then come back and try and fix it up. I think I've taken it from a story that was an absolute chaotic disaster and I've turned it into something much more well developed, but I've been working on the story for so many years that in, in many ways lost touch with some aspects of it and it's hard for me to tell whether or not it's done. It is a little bit disappointing that I won't have finished the book by the end of the month. That's something I really wanted to do, but I think I just picked up this task a little too late. Like 
I decided my goal was to finish it was to edit this book about halfway through nano and so it's not like it was something that i'd really planned out in advance it was ambitious and i ended up falling just short so it's not the end of the world i'm gonna keep this vlog going until i'm done darling i fear for you my plan for now is that i want to finish darling i fear for you by the end of the week at some point i don't know this week i don't know when I'm gonna try and fix up the last scene of symbiosis coming into NaNoWriMo my goal was just to write every day for the month and I didn't even know what I was going to be working on I basically was just like I'm going to take this one day at a time I'm going to work on what it makes sense to work on and I had no idea what was even going to happen and then halfway through the month I took on this task of revising my whole collection and I think that has given me real purpose I've been a bit directionless with my writing since I finished Holding a Ghost I haven't really had a, a solid project or a, a clear direction and this gave me a really clear direction. I am overall really pleased with how much I did this month. I feel like I've had goal and purpose to my writing in a way that I haven't had in many, many months. So it's a bit stormy today. It's December 1st. It's like only about 10 in the morning. Pretty stormy at the moment. The power is actually out, which is not too much of a surprise because the power goes out here a lot. It's also officially not NaNoWriMo anymore. You know, I don't have to write today. I feel like I would have expected myself to be like, time for a break, but I honestly don't really want a break from writing at the moment. I feel like I'm really set on this goal, so I really just don't feel like taking the day off. But today I want to start my Darling I Fear For You edits. All my notes for my edits were like, are very old, right? Like, I had this story workshopped in like January, of 2020. Look at the plan that I'd made and never really like implemented. The main thing that's going to be tough is just like implement getting the heist plot line in place. It's kind of probably one of the most fun pieces in the book. I kind of like that there's just like in this otherwise very like kind of sad collection. There's just like one heist story. The main character kind of reminds me actually of the characters more in my second collection, Forgive Me I'm on Fire. It was the last story I wrote for the book so in many ways it kind of feels like it could go in both. But I did decide to put it in Pareidolia because I wanted 12 stories in the book. I felt like this was the, the best option I had for the last one. I feel like the story stands out a little more in this book because it's a heist and it's also set in a hospital and I've never done a heist, um, nor do I work in a hospital. It's always been a really difficult one for me. Like, I think I really need to keep it simple rather than focusing on the heist aspect. I need to focus more on the emotional aspect of the character because I think that I've been worrying too much about the heist. It's an eight page story. It's not like there's gonna be like a super intricate, amazing heist. Like that's not gonna happen. And I think I've been too focused on creating this really intricate, cool heist. And I haven't been focusing just on keeping that aspect of the story honestly simple, as simple as possible, and focusing on the emotional journey of the character because that's what I am gonna be capable of, that's what I know how to do. So I think I've been overcomplicating it a little too much. I need to focus less on creating this really brilliant heist and executing it, and I need to focus more on the character. So it's like 1.30, the power is still out. So I'm trying to conserve my phone and laptop battery, but I was using my laptop for work all of this morning, so I'm at about 50%. I don't know how much I'll be able to get done because I can't. I, I don't want to drain my computer too much because if the power is not on by today, I'm gonna need it for work tomorrow. I would just like to say that I think I manifested that because about 30 seconds after I filmed that clip, the power came back on. We are back in business. I had kind of a thought about the last scene of symbiosis, so I'm actually just trying to touch that up now. And then I'm gonna start looking at some edits for Darling I Fear For You. So I just did a couple quick little edits to the end of symbiosis, which I have been uh, in conflict with the past few, well, days, weeks that I've been working on this story. I just added a few things that I think really helped improve the pacing of the final scene and wrote a last line that I think is actually much better and I actually like. So I've marked that story officially as done. Is it done? I'm not really sure. <laughs> I kind of feel like a sense of completion with that story that I didn't feel when I was working on it yesterday and the day before. So I'm gonna move on to Darling I Fear For You. I haven't looked at this story in a long time, nor have I looked at my notes. So I'm gonna read over the notes I took during my workshop, which was literally two years ago. Cause I know I'd made notes on how to approach the edit. Cause I did start editing this story one time um, and I didn't get very far. I think because of the issue I mentioned earlier, where I focused a little too much on how the heist was going to happen. And I started really overcomplicating the heist. 
Hello there. So this is actually a retroactive clip. In my infinite wisdom, I think I accidentally deleted this clip and I kind of need it to be here for the continuity of this vlog to make sense. So I'm gonna keep this quick, but basically, what happened was I had started working on Darling I Fear for You. Like I've mentioned before, I wrote this in January of 2020 and then I also had it workshopped in I think January of 2020, like right after I wrote it. And then I didn't start thinking about editing it until sometime in the spring. The day that I started trying to edit it, I was editing it during like a write-in because at the start of the pandemic at Reedsy we were doing write-ins. I cannot do good work while I'm hosting a webinar. It's way too distracting. I honestly like don't do that well with writing sprints. I'll do writing sprints with friends when I'm stuck. During my regular day-to-day -day life, I don't do writing sprints because I find that they chop up my workflow, which is not how I like to write. I like to really get into the flow of writing. Already, I was hosting a webinar where I can never do good work while I'm literally hosting a live stream with thousands of people watching me. Also, writing sprints, especially for editing, do not work. Like editing is something that I have to really get into the flow of and work on for several hours usually. It's not something that I can do in little bits. So that already was a problem. And also at the time I was having the worst mental health month of my life. Basically, I tried to edit it that one day and to no one's surprise, it didn't go very well. And I never came back to the story thinking that this story was just super hard to edit when actually I had just tried to edit it under the least optimal conditions. The biggest issue with that story was the middle. I had a beginning and an end from the that I'd written in the original draft and then I had a middle section that I wanted to rewrite because I wanted to change how the heist unfolded. That I thought would be so hard to write because obviously I'd gotten stuck when I tried to do it a year ago and then I literally just sat down and wrote the whole thing in like 20 minutes. Like I made a brief bullet point outline with like four bullet points of like the things, the stages of the heist that were going to happen and I just sat down and like it, it all fit together. I kept it as simple as I could and it was just there. It took half an hour. I dug up the notes that I'd taken. Turns out I'd already implemented all of the other solutions because they were all like little character psychology things that just needed to be tweaked or little context things that needed to be added in one place in the story. Turns out I'd already done all of that. And so then really all that was left was the one big edit, which was rewriting the middle section, which took half an hour. Like I actually can't believe that I put off editing this story for two years. The thing that I thought was gonna be the biggest headache of my life literally took 30 minutes. So that's great. Oh. So I think I'm done. <laughs> How is this happening? So I just did another draft of the story. I kind of just like smoothed everything over. I'm pretty happy with it. Like I feel like I've hit all of the points that were in my notes. I kind of feel done. <laughs> that was so much easier than I thought it was gonna be to the point that I'm a little bit mad because A, I did not have to put it off for two years. And also I could have done this. Like I totally, Ugh. So my goal was, if my goal was to be done by the end of NaNo and I literally, I was able to finish one day late. Like, I don't know why that kind of stings. I have done it. I've edited the book. My total word count for the month was about 12,000, although it was probably more than that. For a lot of the stories, I didn't really track how many words I'd written that day when I was just revising them. I really only tracked the word count on days where I added a significant amount, but there were a lot of days where I was just kind of reading over the stories, doing edits, adding things here or there, cutting things here or there, and like I didn't really have a way to keep track of those words. So Probably it was more than that, but I really only kept track of around 12,000 words. When I actually think about how much I got done this nano, I am really proud of myself. I edited an entire short story collection, which included significant revisions on several stories. And then I also finished drafting another short story and I revised another story. I'd barely been writing for several months and I'm leaving NaNoWriMo, feeling really motivated to move on to my next few writing tasks. When I had not felt that way at all, like I'd had really no drive to do anything. Well, no, it's not that. It's like for months I had the, I wanted to write, but it's like I couldn't find the energy to actually do it. And I just felt kind of lost. I feel like I wasn't really accomplishing anything. I was kind of just like adrift, not really doing anything. And now at the end of the month, I'm feeling like I've done something really significant in revising this collection. And I'm feeling like I have the energy to tackle other projects. How did your nano go? Did it exceed your expectations? Did you not meet your expectations? Which is okay. I came one day short of editing a whole collection in a month, um, which is 
too bad. Really just anything. Just give me, give me the updates. So that's all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, you can always send me an ask on Tumblr and I'll see you in another video. Bye.